reason dictates that any activity which is detrimental to society would also prove harmful to those who engage in it. Pathological gambling inevitably leads to wide-ranging negative consequences, not only for the one who is addicted, but for others as well. Harm can come in all sorts of formats, not just financial loss, but lost time, lost productivity, personality changes, increased drinking, increased smoking, changes in just family functioning, um, depression, even sleeping problems, physical problems like chest pain and high blood pressure. Now, now a gambler will surely eventually lose all his or her money. And if they own a business, they will lose the business as well. Um, they will lose their family, children, spouse, friends. No one will believe him or her again. Few can resist the desire for easy money and a better life through gambling. Addiction can happen to anyone. Sometimes it develops quickly and sometimes over an extended period of time. Social status doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether one starts out rich or poor. It doesn't matter how intelligent or educated one is. Anyone can fall into the trap. I am Feng En. I got very depressed after I gave birth to my baby. Plus there was heavy pressure at work, always pressure, financial needs, and I wanted to give the best thing to my child. So I went the wrong way. I started gambling in order to try to get more money. That was my thinking. I thought just for fun in the beginning. So I went to the Mahjong Center to play with small amount of money. But soon I was playing with bigger and bigger amounts. And more often. From once in a while until almost every day. I couldn't stop and even started traveling to Macau to gamble. I was a school teacher at that time. When I finished work each day, I couldn't wait to go to Macau. So I went and ended up losing everything, all of our money. There was nothing left, including our home that we lost. And then I went to jail. My name is Stephen. When my wife got addicted to gambling, it was a terrible time for the family. Very stressful. We both used to have good jobs. She was a teacher and I worked in a bank as a highly positioned manager. Good combined salary. Our life was pleasant, successful. We had a mortgage condo. Pretty happy life compared with many other families. But after the gambling debt, we had to sell the condo and live poorly on little money. Selfishness goes hand in hand with problem gambling. Addicts may justify their behavior as a desire to provide for their family, but this is often just an excuse leading to dire consequences. This is my wife, Pei Yi. I met her about 20 years ago in 1997. I had a gambling problem and she was trying to talk me out of it. But I couldn't control my desire. I started gambling with one of my college friends. We took a trip down to Macau. You know, the first time, I won over 200,000 Hong Kong dollars. I felt like it was so easy to earn the money. Then I thought, I don't need to work. Let's go to Macau and earn a little money each day. It will satisfy me and improve my life. I could give my wife a better life. So I felt deeper and, and deeper into addiction. 
My life was a circle of gambling. The addicted gambler is under a false impression that the results of their actions, whether winning or losing, are theirs alone. But like so many things in life, our actions affect others. Our lives are like a mobile hanging on the ceiling. Move one piece, and all the pieces move. Well, I do have a case. There, a man, he is a. 病态之中嘅病态。I know a case, a man, a really bad compulsive gambler. He lived with his daughters for a period of time. The place they stayed did not have electricity, so you can imagine their life. The two girls needed to do homework. Uh, they could not do it without light, so they use candles. It's really sad, but this man did not think about his daughters. He could only think about himself. I have probably seen more homeless here than I've seen on any、uh, street in America,、uh, Las Vegas Boulevard downtown.、Uh, one of the missions here did a survey. I believe it was the rescue mission in Las Vegas, and they found that 70% of the homeless had had problems with gambling.、Uh, they come here hoping to make it big, and it never happens. I have treated and managed many cases related to gambling addiction, such as depression, which is caused by disappointments. We are treating more and more cases of depression in Macau. These patients have a higher risk of suicide. That's evidence that the gambling industry is detrimental. Last year in August, I found out my husband was addicted to gambling. He lost lots of money and stole some of my jewelry from our wedding to sell to get money. I never thought that after 20 years of marriage he would betray me like this. He took almost everything of value. And our child has special needs because of a rare disease. I could not believe that he would do this when we were in such difficult times. I had an emotional breakdown and tried to commit suicide. There was no hope. You don't hear about the suicides. So I had a friend uh, uh, years ago whose sister saw a man jump from the top of the Stardust Hotel, and there was not a word about it in the paper the next day. The suicide count is something that's、uh, swept under the rug, and I'm sure a lot of that's related to gambling. There is a concerted effort by the gaming industry to downplay the dangers associated with gambling: thievery, prostitution, homelessness, broken marriages, and suicide are just a few of the many potential negative consequences derived through the gaming industry, where everything is promoted as harmless fun. The casinos might include small written warnings in their advertising that gambling can become addictive. They may even provide a phone number to a recovery program, but this is merely a means to avoid legal culpability. The truth is that the casinos want you to gamble, and to do so frequently with large amounts of money. 
How this affects people's lives is not their greatest concern.